Okay, so this is the blog for people who are in a relationship uh, with someone who has borderline personality disorder. You know, that, that term is thrown around a lot. Um, and there have been times uh, in my past where I thought I was with, had been with somebody or known somebody who had borderline personality disorder. Looking back on it, they had borderline tendencies but there is a huge difference between somebody who has full-blown borderline personality disorder and somebody who just has a few borderline tendencies here and there. Um, and so this blog is, uh, vlog is for people who uh, are non-borderlines, who are in a relationship or have been in a relationship with somebody who is borderline and they are either trying to recover or trying to make sense of it or you know, healing from it after the fact. I myself am a survivor of a borderline uh, relationship with a borderline and uh, so um, I don't have any uh, evil intent or judgment towards borderlines more any more than I do any other disability you know um, you know the great thing is is that uh, my understanding is that those who seek help can get help and have good lives and all that stuff so if you have if you're a borderline Go get help. It's that simple. If you want to hear what it's like to be on the other end and why you need to get help, not only for your own happiness, but such so you don't cause other people damage, then I'm going to give you firsthand experience of what it was like and what it's still like after the fact. You know, the reason I'm doing this vlog is because I'm still unpacking what's happening uh, and healing, you know, and, and the trauma, uh, the, easily the most toxic most traumatic event of my life and it only lasted a few months and we're talking like the death of a you know a soulmate and um, a divorce after a 10-year relationship the few months I was with a borderline were the most traumatic and most toxic condensed period of my entire life and um, yeah so it's really important if you're in it you're not crazy these are very very toxic uh, dynamic with these people so the real reason why a relationship with a borderline will not work. I mean, I've talked about a lot of things here and there, and you know, uh, those are all true. But if we just get to the to the actual core of it, which if you can understand this, because I didn't, I, I you know, I knew that it was true, but I didn't fully get aware. And if you are in a relationship with a borderline that's lasted more than you know a short period of time, and you didn't the first time something weird happened, you didn't go, hey man, this isn't right, I'm out of here. If you're still with them, um, then you are codependent, period. So you're crazy too. You know, codependence is, is craziness. It's denial. You are trying to make something work with somebody who has told you in so many different ways that they are incapable and unwilling. It's really that they're incapable. It's not that they're unwilling. My experience with the uh, woman I was dating was that it was, she wasn't an evil person at all. I mean, I could tell so many times, even when she was coldly and cruelly and psychopathically tearing me to pieces, I could tell that there was no evil intent whatsoever. The closest thing to evil is uh, in them is that, this is, isn't entirely true, there's a lot of things which come pretty close to evil, but um, is that when they're in, when they're triggered, they're very, uh, they're they're very narcissistic and they look down on you and they're they're very demeaning even when they're trying to be nice they'll, they'll say things you know like this one would say I know that you believe that but you're unconscious right now I mean it's just so demeaning with something that was gl so glaringly real we're not talking about I mean just like you know it's like stabbing you in the heart like no this is your problem that blood that's splattering that's that's your you know that's your problem that that bothers you. It's painful because it's your problem. Um, but the real reason, here's the real reason. The real reason why a relationship with a borderline can never work if they're untreated is because they have no sense of self. They have no identity. Um, uh, see if I can read it again, but I, I read something a while back which brought out a couple of things which was my experience to the letter. 
of what it was like to be with this woman and there was a few things about it that really stuck out so I'll get to the things that that really stuck out you know it goes on and talks about how um, they don't have the inner strength to maintain the facade the way other antisocial personalities do they'll swing from a position of high competence and disdain for others to depression and self-doubt so it talks about their inability to um, to to accomplish anything because of their own um, lack of self-belief but you know that doesn't sound all that bad but the, the real thing is is that they don't have an identity it's really important you comprehend that because without an identity you can't adopt new behaviors you cannot adopt new understandings you cannot do the work necessary to make changes that requires the ability to tolerate your own negative feelings and tolerate the negative feelings of others while you do things that don't give you any immediate feedback. You have to have an identity to survive that. If you don't have an identity, no matter how much you want to do something, you will be incapable because the identity is what gives you the root, the strength, like, you know, to walk on the ground, you have, the earth has to be underneath you so you can push against the earth to keep making, you know, stepping. They have nothing to gain traction on, so they just fall. So it won't matter what they think or what they feel. They'll only be able to, to do whatever impulse is flowing through them because they have no identity. Um, here's what was most important about uh, what this person said. It is important to recognize when relating to a borderline that you don't really exist. When they see you, they see a fuzzy image that is filled in with projections from their own unconscious. If you do not realize this, you will feel crazy with them. That is absolutely the case. That, that was my experience to a T. And because they have no identity, they not only don't see you, bear in mind everything is projection. This is true with healthy people as well. If you have a healthy self-image, you're going to project that onto people and you'll be able to see that. When, when you have a healthy self-image and somebody doesn't, what ends up happening is that you have compassion for them and you accept them at their limitation and you don't try and interact with them on a level deeper than what they can handle because you'll be able to intuitively know. Codependence like myself, because you have your own agenda. You know, in my case, um, I had lost my, my soulmate uh, a couple of years back. And so I was looking for somebody to take that place. And so when somebody came along who uh, showed me the facade of that, I dove right in head first. And I got so attached so quickly. But it wasn't because of anything she had earned. It was because I projected that onto her. Now, uh, she has no identity. She does not know who she is. She has no sense of self. Therefore, she doesn't feel like she even exists. So, since everything is projection, they're going to project onto you, guess what? That you don't exist either. And all they know is how they feel in the moment. They may be able to intellectualize something, uh, from the past or the future, but in terms of what they know, they only know what is happening right now. And um, if they are unable to muster up the energy to put on a facade, because in order to present themselves to the world, this is one thing I've learned and I saw it firsthand. In the beginning, you won't see it. In the beginning, you will see very well-crafted personas that may look a little quirky. Maybe you'll get some, some, something in you will go, eh, mm, eh. but the rest of the facade will be put together so well and they, since they're idealizing you, they will be making you feel so good. You will just say they're, it's because they're really intuitive or because they're really sensitive or something like that. But eventually the facade falls apart. They can't hold it together anymore. And that's when they shift. That's when they change. Now, because they have no identity, this is why they get so um, incredibly reactive to 
uh, actions, but more, in my experience, more uh, thoughts, feelings, and words coming from you. And the reason for that is because they're depending on you for their sense of self. In the beginning, they're, they're just like an infant, because remember, emotionally, they're, they are developed, um, you know, where, where it could be, you know, months old, uh, days, months old, all the way up to, you know, three or four years. It could be anywhere in there. Um, you know that they're that they're operating from, and and infants don't have a sense of self. The parents reflect that. The parents, um, what a truly loving parent, what they do is they reflect back to the child, without agenda. Uh, a mirror that lets the child see who they are. Now we're all different. You know, we all aren't just products of our home. Some of our values and thoughts are products of our environment, but a lot of it we are individuals and we come up with our own you know our own wiring and our own karma whatever you want will create a, a unique identity but the parent has to be there to reflect back to the child just even in looks and in essence and in energy without agenda you know a true parent wants to see what do I have here who is this person and what can I see in them? And, and then they'll reflect that back and encourage it. And that will allow the child to say, I am this. I feel this. These are my values. This is what I want. And this is where they draw from. This is where the decisions are made. And if they don't have that, then they're going to be depending upon you for their identity. Now, that's an impossible thing to do. It's impossible for you to be able to have a strong enough identity that they can climb inside it because that's what they're trying to do they're trying to climb inside your energy and your identity you will fail them because you're imperfect number one and because um, they because they have within them their their main experience of themselves 24 7 on an unconscious level is that they don't exist and they are unlovable and they are just absolutely totally utterly flawed that's because that is a defense mechanism that little infants and children come up with when their parents aren't giving making giving them their needs meeting their needs they're trying to figure out what they can do differently to get their parents to give them their needs so that's why in the beginning they're so you know they they're so compliant and so loving because if they can get you to fully focus on them the way a parent is supposed to focus on an infant, then they will, they're trying to recreate it. Obviously it doesn't work, it can't work, it's impossible, it's too late. They'll have to learn how to parent themselves, and create their own identity. But the identity is absolutely it. And so that's important to know because whenever the facade comes up, you know, whenever they get it together and they put together a facade, and they go out there and they function with you or with somebody else. Um, you can easily become um, duped into believing that, oh, they're a person now. They were just having a problem before, and now they're a person. They're back. It's going to be okay. They'll even say, I, I realized this about myself. I'm feeling so much better. And I realized I did that to you. And so in the future, we're going to do this. And they'll, you know, and you'll be placated because you think you're talking to somebody who has a sense of self. They don't. So the moment that a strong breeze comes through, they will lose, the facade will fall apart, and then they will change. Um, and the next one I'll talk about why they get triggered, why they get so, what's really going on when they're, when um, they devalue you. And by the way, that's why you constantly feel devalued. Even when things are good, if you're really honest with yourself, you know, and you, you put your, your codependent agenda aside, and if you're really honest with yourself, even when things are good, even when they're loving you, there is this unmistakable feeling that you are being devalued. Your identity and your sense of self is being degraded, and you keep degrading it on an unconscious level in little bits and pieces to grab on to the good that's coming to you right now. I mean, if you're honest with yourself, you'll see that. It's not like they, it, even when they are 
when they're um, when they're idolizing you and when they're functioning and they're being kind and loving even in that there's you if you're honest with yourself there's never a point where you just you fully relax there's always a part of you that your instinct is saying I feel bad I feel like I'm just unworthy and I feeling I'm feeling really anxious and unsettled that's why it's because again everything is projection they have no identity they have no self-worth or self-value at all in fact they feel they are completely totally the most unworthy beings on the planet and since they have no identity to draw from the only thing they can do is project that onto you even when they're trying to put on the happy face and even when they're being loving to you anyway if, if you're honest with yourself you'll know exactly what I'm talking about okay next time I'm going to talk to you about why what the real reason is they get triggered and if you can understand this then you won't be as easily duped when they're uh, idealizing you, okay?